the chapel of Grandview University and the preaching ministry of Luther Memorial Church. Merry Christmas. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Merry Christmas. For those of you who are watching online, worshiping with us, for those who will be gathering in person today, we are glad that you're with us. We have a rule here at this church that if you walk through the doors, whether it's online or in person, you have a church and you have a pastor. And so we are glad that you're joining us for worship. As you also might know, we are under construction project. We're getting close. We're almost done. The church is looking beautiful. We have a little more work to do, but that's okay, because we know that in the midst of all this work, the Lord is still working. He is with us. He is for us. Emmanuel. And so it's our hope and prayer today, as you join us for worship, that you will hear the good news of God's great love for you. Oh, come, let us worship. join me in the call to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. A reading from Luke chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Join the 
that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, my Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Amen. It is easy to miss the point. It's easy to miss the point in, in life, in Christmas, and faith. It is easy to miss the point. In fact, I have a wonderful illustration for you. On December 17, 1903, you might remember that date. That's the date when Orville and Wilbur Wright made their first flight. It was so good, they flew for 12 seconds. And upon that flight, they, went to, they rushed to the telegraph office and sent this, this text to their sister. We have flown for 12 seconds. We will be home for Christmas. Well, their sister, upon receiving that telegram, went to the newspaper office and told the story of their brother's flight and then said, hey, my brothers are going to be home for Christmas, and if you'd like to, you can uh, interview them. And the, the editor said, that'd be wonderful, and I'll make sure to put something in the newspaper. Well, on December 19th, that newspaper, that local newspaper, this is the headline they put on the sixth page of the paper. Wright Brothers, home for Christmas. That was, the, that was the headline. Not Wright Brothers, they've flown. No, the Wright Brothers, home for Christmas. The most important story of the year was man's first flight. The editor totally missed it. I think we miss it all the time. It's easy to miss the point. Christmas is like this. Too often we think the magic of Christmas is trees and presents and, and family and food. And, and in truth, all of these things are good things. But the most important part of Christmas 
the main message of Christmas is that God loves us so much that he becomes like us so that we would become like him. One of the reasons we miss this point, though, is, is too often we think the most important thing in life are the, the big things, the, the things that we can see. But that's not always true. Sometimes the most important things in life are the things and the events that no one sees. Take, for instance, the year 1809. In 1809, Napoleon was moving across Austria, and it was a bloodbath. In 1809, all the news agencies, if there was social media, if there was the internet, everyone would re be reporting on Napoleon. But no one would report that in 1809, a young child named Alfred Tennyson was born to a pastor and his wife. Tennyson would go on to shape um, literature. No one would have reported in Boston that Edgar Allan Poe was born. No one would have reported that Louis Braille, inventor of the Braille system, or Charles Darwin was born in 1809. And in that same year, no one would have reported that in a log cabin in Kentucky, Mr. and Mrs. Lincoln would have a son that they would name Abraham. And I'd argue as an influential in 1809 was Napoleon. More influential were the births of these people because they truly turned the world upside down. Now, I share this with you because in our reading from Luke, the most newsworthy event of that time was the census. Caesar Augustus, the emperor, he, he ordered a census. He wanted to count how many people he had in his empire. He wanted to know how much to tax him. He wanted to know just how expansive his power was. And if there was news at that time, and if there was the internet or social media, the headlines would be something like this. Caesar Augustus is so great. He rules over a gigantic kingdom. Or Caesar Augustus, look at those numbers. He has a lot of subjects. Or maybe... There was a protest going on because the poor are burdened because they have to travel for the census. I mean, that's what the news would have been. All of those things. But no one would have reported that a poor man and a poor woman had a poor child in a poor town, in a poor country, in a poor manger. Jesus' birth would have made no announcements at all. No one would have reported on it. But thankfully, there were some reporters on the scene. The angels. The angels came to deliver a message. The angels came so that we would not miss the point. Listen again to what the angels said. They said, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. This announcement is so important, and it, even though it's short, it's, it's filled with meaning. Listen to these words again. Do not be afraid. God does not want us to be afraid. God does not want us to be afraid of, of our future, our present. God does not want you to be afraid of, of God. God wants you to, to not be afraid. Also, great news or good news of great joy for all the people. Jesus' birth is not just for the rich, it's for the poor. It's for those who vote Republican or those who vote Democrat. It's for those who've never voted. It's for the rich, it's for the poor, it's for the smart, it's for those who have never gone to school. Jesus' birth is for all people that they might have joy, great joy. Also today in the city of David, today, salvation has come with God. It's always about today because God is interested in this moment. He's interested in you that on this day, today you would know that God loves you so much. Even more than that, in the city of David, David was that great leader, the great king of Israel who fought a giant, who, who loved God with his whole heart. That's where Jesus was born in the city of David, because Jesus is going to love God and love this world, and Jesus is going to battle not against Goliath, but against sin, death, and the devil, and he's going to win, and he's going to do this for you. 
In fact, then it goes on to say that in the city of David, the Messiah is born. That's the one who's anointed with the Holy Spirit, anointed with God's power to carry forward God's will. And finally, this child is going to be born. The sign of his birth is that he's born not in a palace, not in a big house, and he's not clothed in gold, but rather he's born in a manger and wrapped in simple cloths because Jesus came for you. And that right there is the most important lesson of the announcement. All of what Jesus has done is for you. It's not about the presence. It's not about the food. It's not about where you're at at this moment. It's instead about God who is for you. A God who's willing to put on flesh to be like us so that he would save us so that we can be with him. A God who turns everything upside down and inside out. That's Christmas. I want to end with this final thought, just for a second. Because I know for all of us, this year has been hard. It's been a terrible year. And it's not easy to watch the news. The stories, even though there's pieces and places of hope, it's also been a lot of hard stories that have been reported. And these stories have needed to be reported. But maybe we've missed the point in all of this. Maybe we could learn something from that editor who got the Wright brothers' story wrong. For the editor, what was most important was not the flight. Instead, it was about two people that the community loved who was coming home. Maybe the editor got it right. Because maybe, just maybe, all of this isn't about our accomplishments. Maybe what matters most is a relationship. The relationship between God and us. We can't always see this relationship, but we know God is with us. And I want you to know that too. Let me be an angel for you today. God has not forsaken you. You do not have to be afraid. The sign of his love is not a bank account, but instead the sign of his love is a manger and the cross. And for those of you who find yourself weeping tonight, God weeps with you. For those who are frustrated tonight, God is frustrated with you. But remember, God has not forsaken you. He loves you. He loves you deeply. And the great headline of heaven on this day is this. Because Jesus was born, you get to spend eternity with him. And that's going to be wonderful. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. In Jesus' name, amen.
please join with me in prayer. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Blessed are you, Prince of Peace. You rule the earth with truth and justice. Send your gift of peace to all nations of the world. Blessed are you, Wonderful Counselor. You enlighten the heart with steadfast love. Enliven your church that it may bear good tidings of great joy to all people. Blessed are you, Emmanuel. You promise to be with us even to the end of the age. Open our eyes to see your presence in all who are hungry, lonely, or homeless. Blessed are you, Son of Mary. You share our humanity. Have mercy on the sick, the dying, and all who suffer this day. Blessed are you, Son of God. You dwell among us as the Word made flesh. Reveal yourself to us in word and sacrament, that we may bear your light to all the world. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer our thanks and praise to you, O oh Lord, Holy Father, and so with the angels, the archangels, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night which is betrayed, our Lord took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to all, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I encourage you to take your communion kits that you have at home, and as you take the wafer, hear these words, this is the body of Christ given for you. And now as you take your communion cup, you'll take the wine or the juice and hear these words, this is the blood of Christ which is shed for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And that is the good news, that our Lord Jesus Christ is for you in the bread and in the wine God is with you and he's for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. So
receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. You are free in Christ. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas. Amen. Thank you.